trying to keep it short. Trying to. I'm sorry. This might be really painful to watch. Like, really painful. I'm gonna cringe. I'm gonna, like, cry when I post this. If I post this. Okay. Hi, I'm Emma, and I've suffered from anxiety disorders pretty much since from when I was born. According to psychiatry.org, like, you know, if you're not sure, anxiety disorders differ from normal feelings of nervousness or anxiousness and involve excessive fear or anxiety, which explains why I might be particularly awkward or stuttery or choppy or why this might be incredibly short and sound highly scripted, because it is, because over there where I'm looking all the time is my script, and it's a long detailed script because I'm very anxious, as you might already be able to tell. But maybe that just adds to the realness of it, and that's what I'm gonna go for, because for my first video, I don't think I'm gonna be able to just talk and talk and talk. Like, I need to work up to that stuff. Anyway, um, um, yeah, there'll probably be a lot of ums and so's and uh. In my first video, I will be going over my personal history with each anxiety disorder that I've encountered and kind of talk about in what ways I've suffered with them. Then I'll talk about why I started this channel and explain my channel name. Like, I'm not gonna like be defining them all. I'll do that on a separate video, but I'm just gonna kind of give you like a brief history of my encounters with each. So, I've had separation anxiety like since I left my mother's womb. Ironically, it's between my mother and I, of which I am anxious to be a part of, or something. Anytime that she went to work or I went to school, like even like preschool, crying on the stairs every single day because I didn't want her to leave. I mean, I guess that's kind of normal for like a little kid, but it like carried on for an embarrassing amount of time. I didn't really get better with that. I kind of freaked out every day even though she bribed me with like chocolate bars and stuff. Even when I was just at home with my dad, it would be really, really anxious, like to the point where I'd almost throw up. Cool. Like as, like, like as, as for now, like I still have separation anxiety from my mother, who's the most loving, amazing person in the whole wide world. Shout out to mom if you're watching. Think. I'm still, anxious now like i wouldn't want to be apart from her for like a weekend well she went to another city for a concert thingy like three years ago my grandparents looked after me for that time and that would be fine normally for most children like most of the time they're like normal children normal children's parents go on like like go on cruises for weeks at a time and they're fine just staying with their grandparents but not when somebody like me has anxiety so yeah i was it was rough i feel like this could be a story time video next up phobias i've had several phobias ranging from animals to unharmful inanimate objects to different possible ways that i could die <laughs> most of which i still struggle with so, um, if you want me to talk about it more, let me know so I can make a separate video because, like, there's a lot of phobias and I'll list them all, embarrassing or not. Next up, OCD. I need to make, like, a disclaimer kind of thing. I've never been diagnosed with this. I don't know if I have OCD, but when I was younger, I would, like, I'd be very aware of my surroundings. Like, if my mother moved something in the house, I would point at it and be like, ah, like, I, I know, I see what you did there. Um, and I spent most of my childhood pretty much just sorting and organizing things, like my Hot Wheel collection into different colors and sizes and types of cars and, yeah, so I was definitely an organizer, but I never really thought that I might have OCD because, like, that's more extreme, so still not sure. However, I am very perfectionistic, especially like now when it comes to homework or really anything. I just, I want it to be perfect all the time. Like, it has to be perfect and I will work until the point of doing me harm. Hence, you know, it being 1.05 in the morning and I'm doing this. I don't really know why. I think it's because I want to, I think, but still not sure if it's that or my crazy brain. 
Next, social anxiety. When I was younger, I always felt left out and I didn't really have many friends. Like I had a few kind of, but I don't know. It didn't, it wasn't really like a trustworthy friendship thingy. And I didn't like hang out with people all the time. Most of my lunch times and recesses, I kind of spent by myself alone walking around or sitting down and eating <laughs> um and i didn't speak in class unless i was called on i'm better at that now like i i kind of like you know i volunteer if i have something that i'm sure is right <laughs> so i always spoke very quietly and i still do which i'm sure you can tell by this video because i'm sure i won't be belting out my words even if it is on a script that i keep looking over there for yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> and I overthink absolutely everything before I say it. Like, it has to run through my mind five times before I say something. Even if it's just, like, in a gr small group of friends, I have to make sure it's the right tone and the right, um, like, words <laughs> that make sense. But say exactly what I want to say. And usually that doesn't happen. Or the, like, topic of conversation passes before I get the chance to put in my two cents. I have more friends probably than I did before, but not a lot, and it's taken a whole lot of effort on my part. It's really tough for me to plan to hang out or text people or anything like that. Like, I'd so much rather not. No offense to you if you're one of those people. I like you as a person. It's just difficult for me to interact with you. Next is GAD, also known as Generalized Anxiety Disorder. And I think that developed like more, well, it could have been any time, but it was most like apparent around grade five. So I would have been like about 10, I think, uh, when I had stomach aches every day and like needed to come home from school all the time because I wasn't feeling well. But once I got home from school, I would feel better. And I wasn't a kid like that. Like I, I'm a good kid. Like I don't just fake it to stay home from school. Most of the time I really like school, but uh, I thought it was a flu because I had the flu like over summer and I'm, I just thought it was a stomach bug that wasn't going away, but it turned out to be anxiety, which we learned after several doctor's appointments and therapist appointments and all that stuff. Panic disorder. I most strongly had that around grade 7, so how old would I have been? 12 when I threw up on the first day of middle school. That was fun. Not at all. Um, it was a year and a half after that, so all of grade 7, half of grade 8 before I was able to go back to school full time. Also, I think it's important to mention that at this, at at the time, my dad didn't quite understand, like, my anxiety. He kind of got upset at me, you know, using anger and logic and punishment to make me go to school full time. Which he quickly learned and I quickly- we all quickly learned that that was not the way to go. Dad, if you're watching, like, it's okay. We've gone past that. I just feel like it's important to, you know, talk about how not everybody understands things at first. Just so you know, I still suffer with like all of these problems that I've mentioned. I just briefly talked about like the, um, the times that they were most controlling in my life. It was super brief. We can get into more detail like when I actually focus on each one. This isn't quite related to anxiety, but it's like responsible for a lot of my anxiety issues. So, um, and I, I think it's also important to mention because it's like the other half of my life when I'm not anxious, I'm dealing with these issues. So I've suffered from feet, leg, knee problems for literally since I was born. I was born with clubbed feet, which means they turn in like that and they were like backwards. I always feel like an outsider and like I'm on, and I've been unable to join in on regular kid activities. like. Never really learned how to ride my bike except for a three month period before I freaked out and wouldn't ride them without training wheels. Or going out with friends, which I can't do right now really, unless I'm in my wheelchair. Getting sidetracked. Um, so yeah, born with club feet, I wore a lot of casts and was always in pain. I didn't walk till I was two years old, probably a little later, even in like even then it was uncomfortable and I didn't want to and I kinda had to be forced to. I developed knee dysplasia 
My first incident was in grade four when my knee dislocated at school and I had no idea what happened. Seven years of my life, almost every single day, I have done some sort of physio exercise stuff. When my knees would dislocate, it would be because it's at like a specific angle or weird amount of pressure. So I had a really bad knee dislocation on de in December 2013, so I was grade eight, which led to me literally walking bent legged. Like instead of them, them being straight, they were bent and I would walk like that because I was too anxious to straighten it afterwards because any knee dislocations, like I said, happened between bent and straight and bent was like my safety position. So if I was going down hills or putting too much like anywhere that I would have to put more pressure on my legs, then I'd know that I'd have to have them like bent to, which I learned that avoided like dislocation, which was by the way, a lot of pain when it dislocated, a lot of pain. Maybe it's just because I have a super low pain tolerance, maybe but it was, it was bad and it was embarrassing, especially when I fall down on the ground and everybody looks at me and I cry, and, you know. Anyway, not really point. So yeah, I've had three knee operations over the past two or so years, which involved screw putting in, kneecap arranging, tendon moving. I don't even know what they're called. I don't even know. <laughs> it's been a lot. And I kind of can't really believe that, you know, I've survived them all because that was like the main part of my anxiety for such a long time, just the operations. And now my main anxiety has gone towards recovery and normal, normal people should be, should have been recovered within eight weeks after the operation. But I didn't really, I haven't really walked like properly since before December, 2013. So I'm relearning how to walk. And that's really stressful, <laughs> especially when I've developed new anxiety phobia things over open spaces and long hallways and kind of just walking in general, which is not what I want at all because like, I want to walk, I need to walk to live and it's really 